Alas, a Nigerian youth emerges a leader, not just a PA. Welcome to Diaspora Digital Media. I am Lydia Odwada. In a significant political development, Governor Godwin Obaseki of Edo State has appointed Omobayo Marvelous Godwin, a 38-year-old engineer, as the new Deputy Governor of Edo State. This appointment follows the impeachment of the former Deputy Governor, Philip Shwaibu, and represents a fresh perspective in the state's leadership. Omobayo, a member of the Labour Party, brings a combination of youth and technical expertise to the role potentially signaling a new direction in governance and policy making. The inauguration was held at the Edo State Government House in Benin City, marking the beginning of Omobayo's tenure as his journey in the higher excellence of state administration. Philip Shwaibu, the impeached deputy governor of Edo State, got impeached following the adoption of a report by a seven-man investigative panel set up by the Edo State House of Assembly. The panel was tasked with probing allegations of misconduct against Mr. Shwaibu, led by Justice S.A. Omonwa, retired. They conducted a thorough review of the charges. Despite legal challenges and objections raised by Mr. Shwaibu and his counsel, the impeachment proceedings continued, culminating in his removal from office. This political development has been met with various reactions, including Mr. Shaibu denouncing the impeachment as an act of dictatorship. The situation remains a significant point of discussion with the state's political landscape. The specific allegations against Philip Shaibu, the deputy governor of Edo State, included perjury and the leaking of government secrets. These charges were part of the impeachment proceedings initiated by the Edo State House of Assembly. The situation escalated when the House accused Shaibu of these serious offenses, which they believed were ranted an investigation and subsequent legal action. The allegations pointed to a deeper rift between Shaibu and his principal, Governor Godwin Obaseki, especially after Shaibu expressed his intention to participate in the upcoming governorship race. This political tension within the state's leadership structure led to a series of events, including the setting up of a seven-man investigative panel by the chief judge of the state and the eventual impeachment of Shaibu, following the panel's report. Although Mr. Shaibu's legal team made efforts to challenge the precedents, including a case filed in Abuja to suspend the impeachment move, the panel proceeded with its mandates. The panel's findings were adopted by the Edo State House of Assembly leading to Mr. Shaibu's impeachment. Recall that the founder of Sahara Reporters had asserted that Nigerian youths are comfortable being PAs. Here is a 38-year-old youth as a deputy governor of Edo State. Sounds good. Even better is the fact that a sitting political office holder can be sacked. The federal government is reportedly taking steps to raise funds for financially distressed electricity distribution companies, known as DISCOs. Now, these companies are facing financial challenges and the government's intervention aims to stabilize the sector and ensure the continuity of electricity supply. Human rights lawyer Femi Falana has highlighted this issue, stating that the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, is considering extending the electricity tariff hike to more customers. This move is seen as a way to generate additional revenue for the discos, which could potentially alleviate their financial stress. The tariff increase, however, has been met with criticism as it places an additional burden on consumers, especially in the context of other economic challenges, such as the removal of petrol subsidy and the collapse of foreign exchange windows. 
The situation underscores the delicate balance between the need for infrastructure investment and the economic impact on citizens. The government's approach to resolving the DISCO's financial issues will be closely watched, as it will have significant implications for the country's power sector and economic well-being. Electricity distribution companies, DISCOs, faced a multitude of challenges that can impact their operational efficiency and financial stability. One of the primary concerns is affordability, as retail electricity prices have been on the rise, largely due to increased wholesale power supply costs and general inflation. Aging infrastructure also poses a significant challenge, with some components of the power grid being over a century old, leading to a dilemma between replacing or maintaining these assets. Unpredictable demand patterns, partly driven by the adoption of electric vehicles, EVs, and distributed solar, add to the complexity of managing the network effectively. Regulatory compliance is another hurdle with utilities having to navigate a complex web of evolving regulations where non-compliance can result in substantial fines and unreputational damage. The management of an extensive asset register, which includes maintaining an up-to-date record of numerous poles and associated assets, is a daunting task for any disco. Additionally, managing the cost base is challenging, as higher costs lead to increased rates for cost and utilities must justify the management actions and expenditure decisions and regulatory and funding pressures. Minimizing restoration time after outage is crucial for maintaining customer trust and satisfaction. Severe outages, cause, severe outages can cause significant reputational damage and identifying the location and cause of issues is central to this challenge. Storm preparedness and building network resilience against extreme weather fluctuations are also significant concerns, as these events are beyond the control of the operators and can have massive consequences. Furthermore, the integration of new technologies and the shift towards treating consumers as partners require discos to adapt and innovate. This includes putting data to good use improving visibility into member EV adoption and managing the impacts of higher peak demand due to unmanaged EV charging loads. The challenges faced by discos are multifaceted and require a strategic approach to ensuring reliable and affordable electricity supply while navigating the complexities of a rapidly evolving energy landscape. Recent reports indicate that a former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele, has been remanded in the custody of the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, EFCC, following allegations of abuse of office. The court proceedings took place in Lagos, where Emefiele faced charges related to the misallocation of significant sums of money. The case has garnered considerable attention highlighting the ongoing efforts to address corruption and abuse of power within financial institutions. As the legal process unfolds, it serves as a reminder of the importance of transparency and accountability in positions of authority. If Godwin Emefiele is found guilty of the charges against him, the penalties could be severe, given the gravity of the accusations. While the specific sentencing guidelines for each charge are determined by Nigerian law, generally, crimes such as misappropriation of funds, conferring unlawful advantages, and other corruption-related offenses can carry significant fines and lengthy prison sentences. In cases involving high-level officials and large sums of money, the courts may impose the maximum penalties to serve as a deterrent to others. It's important to note that the legal process must be followed and a fair trial must determine guilt or innocence. Until then, 
any accused individual, including a mephili, is presumed innocent. This development is part of a broader effort to address corruption and ensure accountability in public office. The case has garnered significant attention, highlighting the ongoing challenges and the importance of transparency in the financial sector. Legal processes are underway and further details are expected as the case progresses. <music> Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf of Kano State has expressed strong criticism of his predecessor, Al Haji Abdullahi Gandaji's tenure describing it as an error marked by mismanagement and corruption. The current governor's administration has been vocal about the challenges they face, which they attribute to the alleged financial and administrative misconduct of the previous government. Governor Yusuf has called for the release of a report by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, on the matter, emphasizing the need for accountability and transparency. This call to action signifies a commitment to addressing past issues and moving toward a more responsible governance structure. The situation underscores the complexity of political transitions and the importance of upholding ethical standards in public service. The ongoing dialogue between the current and former administrations of Kano State reflects the dynamic nature of political accountability and the pursuit of good governance. The specific allegation against the previous administration of Governor Abdullahi Gandhiji includes serious charges of corruption and financial misconduct. The Kano state government has filed an eight-count charge against Gandhiji, his wife, Hafsat Umar, the son, Umar Abdullahi Umar, and five others. The charges encompass bribery, misappropriation and diversion of funds. It is alleged that Gandhiji solicited and received bribes in dollars in connection with state contracts. Furthermore, he is accused of diverting funds earmarked for healthcare supplies, such as face masks and hospital equipment for personal gain. Alongside his wife as an accomplice, Gandhiji is also implicated in a scheme involving the misappropriation of land meant for public benefits. This land was reportedly sold and the proceeds were allegedly deposited in a bureau to change account and converted to dollars. Additionally, a forensic analysis has confirmed the authenticity of a video showing Gandhiji allegedly receiving bundles of dollar notes as a bribe. These allegations paint a picture of a governance system compromised by corrupt practices, highlighting the importance of accountability and transparency in public service. The legal precedents against Gandhiji and his associates are a significant step in addressing these alleged wrongdoings and restoring public trust. Recent reports have addressed the speculation regarding Peter Obi, the Labour Party candidate in the 2023 presidential election, potentially running with former Kaduna State Governor Nasir El Rufai in the 2027 elections. Peter Obi has publicly dismissed these rumors, emphasizing his current focus on improving governance and the quality of life for Nigerians today rather than election strategies for the future. He has expressed a commitment to the Labour Party and to fostering a better society for Nigerians, prioritizing immediate progress over long-term electoral plans. This stance reflects a broader sentiment that the welfare of the citizens and the state of the nation should take precedence over political maneuvering and election campaigns. Overall, Peter Obi's policy proposition aimed to create a more secure, prosperous, and equitable Nigeria with a government that is responsive to the needs and aspirations of its people. His leadership style and policy directions have garnered significant support, particularly among the younger, more socially conscious demographic who are eager for change and a new direction in Nigerian politics. 
Peter Obi has policies that he thinks will move Nigeria forward. Peter Obi's policies are designed to address Nigeria's critical issues. The implementation is challenged by systemic, financial, collaborative, perpetual, legal, and external factors. Overcoming these challenges require a concerted effort from all stakeholders, including the government, private sector, civil society, and the international community. What will a Pita Obi Air Rufai combination be like? Will this combination give Pita Obi the support he got in 2023? That's it on DDM's update. I am Lydia Odoada saying thank you for staying tuned.